Willemsen was 16.55 at the halfway point, and she was just under seven seconds slower than Witten. So at the moment, from the turn times, it's a New Zealand-Canada contest, but never discount Wendy Hoofenagel, who is looking exceptionally smooth. Well, a lot of the riders, as I say, chosen to uh, get over to the left. A lot of that will be using some of this furniture. It's a little open at the moment to uh, get some shelter from that wind that's coming from ahead on the left. Sure, also composed. No sign of weakness at the moment. Still got the energy and power to keep that big gear turning. And we're still seeing her take those brakes where she uh, just freewheels, and she's doing that more and more frequently now, every few seconds. So if she's not uh, perhaps as comfortable as she was, she made a strong start. But I think she's uh, she is failing a little on this return journey. Well, Shaw started two minutes ahead off, of Witten, who we're looking at at the moment. And uh, the right just about to uh, hear the encouragement from the team car behind, yeah, and the manager behind is telling her which side of the road actually to select at various uh, sections of the course. Great shot, mate. So we had a close up on the right hand side. So still going Ball very, very uh, powerfully here, Witten as we come back to Wendy Hoofenagel. This competition now really getting towards the sharp end. Hoofenagel chasing down Shaw, who in turn is chasing down Shanks, who's looking after trying to bridge to uh, Whitelaw. And let's not forget that uh, Witten has uh, gone very, very well ever since the start. Well, Wendy Hoofenagel would desperately love a victory in this event, so often second on the track, always in the hunt, one of the best competitors in the world that desperately wants a gold medal of her own. And today, she's trying to make it today. Yep, it just seems to elude her, doesn't it? That individual gold medal. I know after the pursuit, she was very, very disappointed, but she said that she's going to have a real crack at this as we look down once again at Alexis Rhodes. Enormous gear that, uh, that she's got going there. I'm not sure that's the best way to get through this headwind. And, and Whitner Rhodes, of course, has got an impossible task because she started one minute behind the flying Canadian, Tara Whitten, who we're looking at again. And Whitten's got the superb leg speed. This course is really suiting her. Well, she does look balanced. She's got uh, chosen to use a very deep section front wheel, which is more aerodynamic, but uh, quite a challenge to control in the wind. 47 minutes. Uh, 50 odd seconds was the finishing time for the first athlete Devi of India so she's about uh, 14 minutes 12 minutes away from the finish to get back to Willemsen and remember the competition at the moment according to the midway split was between this athlete here from New Zealand Willemsen and Witten of Canada well she's opted for a completely different strategy she's going to take the shortest route possible around this bend by hugging the cones and she's giving away a little bit of shelter from the left from these trees to break up the wind for her so she's going to whip across to the left in a minute no medals one of any color by a kiwi in this individual time trial an event that made uh, its appearance in the commonwealth games in Kuala Lumpur in 1998 Probably similar the conditions smoothest, I think of, uh, of the two I think she does look the smoother whether that's going to translate to uh, a finishing time I don't know you are right about the gear roads he's pushing it's massive isn't it massive gear I think uh, when we had a shot before of uh, Tara Witten she could actually see the car of Wendy Hoofenagel in front of her well, there's the finishing effort of the earlier Canadian. That's Erin Willock, I think, just coming in. There's no caption coming up to confirm that, but I think that may well have been Willock as we get back to Hoofenagel now. Well, she's starting to shift around on the saddle. The effort's starting to tell. She's desperately trying to get every bit out. She's in the last few minutes of this race. She's trying to get everything out that she can. Hug in the left-hand side of the road. You saw the uh, distance to go. Five kilometres remaining there, Chris. That's three miles of racing left. And remember, Hoofenagel is chasing down Shaw. And then uh, behind Hoofenagel is Witten, who's been leading the contest. 
These are the finishing times so far. Willock of Canada leading on 41 minutes, 16 seconds. And then the rest are just underlined behind. But that's the time we've got to aim for. That first time that was shown at 41 minutes, the leading time by the Canadian. Come back to Julie Shaw here. And uh, I think she really is in some difficulty. She's freewheeling a lot now. Is she getting a bit of cramp, would you think, Chris? She looked great at the start. I wonder if she's struggling with the heat. We had had an indication it was 37 degrees at uh, road level and uh, very difficult conditions to prepare for in the UK. She doesn't look comfortable at all. Back to Rhodes, looking once again at Rhodes of Australia, who, well, her legs hardly seem to be moving the gear, the size of the gear she's turning. Well, it doesn't look ideal to me. This, uh, this return journey seems to be two or three minutes uh, slower than the outward leg due to that wind. Hoofenagel giving it absolutely everything now. Can she clinch this gold medal? The gold medal that somehow or other eludes her. But we're going to know what the time for uh, Shanks is and Shaw. Well, Shanks and Shaw. Julia Shaw, of course, is the one that we're likely to see topple the early pace setter, and that is Willock of Canada. Just rise gently here, Chris. You can see, can't you, in the distance? Just rolls and the surface changes. There is a penalty to be paid for keeping moving across the road like this. She's drifting around a lot now, which I think is a sign of fatigue. Same thing we've seen with Julie Shaw, who's in front of us now. She's uh, coming into just the last few minutes of racing for her. And Shaw, let us not forget, once again, let me tell you, started one minute ahead of Hoofenagel. This is Corset coming in now for Australia. Now then, Corset looks as though she's going to put Willock's time under pressure. Can't quite tell how close she is to the line, actually, from this shot. But uh, Willock from Canada still the leader. No, she's going to run out of distance here. Of course, it will not dislodge the uh, Australian leader, or the Canadian leader, I should say, Willock. Close, though. This is the time, then. Of course, it comes in. Well, she's, uh, well there's another rider coming in soon. So 41.16 is the time to aim for, held by Willock of Canada. And this looks like the finishing effort of Emma Trott. Trott coming in here for England. Had a good ride, but just behind her, it looks very much as though uh, Holt is coming in as well. So Trott almost picked up here by Holt of New Zealand so it's the Kiwis time that's going to be the quicker than the England rider here she comes this is Trot getting near to the line I think she's going to go fastest here she too is going to run out of distance a respectable time for Emma Trot and an even better time then by Holt of New Zealand Chris because she's almost picked up Trot we aren't going to see that time actually but we're back to Wendy Hoofenagel. And it's going to be Shaw and Hoofenagel that are getting very, very close to the line. Whitelaw of Australia was behind Holt of New Zealand. Now then, coming in here to finish for Canada. Looking pretty powerful indeed. This is going to be Beveridge coming across the line. Well, Beveridge has been picked up by one or two riders, I'm afraid. Well, it looks like Hoofenagel is... Uh suffering a little bit in this final run-in you're right shanks is somewhere here in the mix as well from new zealand and sure and then hoofenagel these will be the times that should be coming in next the fastest time that we've seen is 40 minutes and 19 seconds but that was bettered by halt of new zealand so halt of new zealand leading on 39 22 Emma Trott, 56 seconds slower, and Willock of Canada lying third, 1 minute and 53. But that could well change as the concluding seeded riders come up to the line. And it's not going to be long now before Hoofenagel comes in and Shaw as we welcome Whitelaw of Australia, who really is struggling and having to get out of the saddle to find a little bit more strength and power. The rider from Kenya in the red and just behind her we've got Whitelaw of Australia they're coming in thick and fast now Holt's time well that's out of reach 
It's out of reach, of course, for the rider from Kenya and also for Whitelaw of Australia.